Hello and welcome you all to this channel. Dear students, this is Professor Rajesh Parapte, a book author of 25 plus engineering books. I am starting a new video series for the subject control systems, which is the subject for second year ENTC students. So today's topic is open loop or closed loop systems and transfer function. This subject is again mathematical subject like signals and systems. You can expect 90% numerical and only 10 or 15% uh, theory part is there. So whatever theory part is there or whatever numerical part is there, I would like to uh, explain you what are the questions that are expected. So I have made a list of these questions. These questions are limited only for today's topic. For each topic, I will be giving you the questions. So uh, the first question can be like this, explain open loop system with suitable example. You can expect it for three marks or explain closed loop system with suitable example. And, and you can well expect a numerical on transfer function. So without wasting the time, let us start the session. So first part is open loop system. Now, before studying the system, you should be aware of the notations. In control system, certain different notations are used. In other subjects like signals and systems, input is denoted by X of T, output is denoted by Y of T. Whereas in control system, input is denoted by R of T. It is known as a reference input. Then output is denoted by C of T. C of T is known as controlled output. These are two standard notations. Now, this is the block diagram of open loop system. What's the meaning of open loop system? The output depends only on input. Output is not changing by taking into reference or taking into consideration of some other factors. A good example is a traffic light signal. This controller is the device which decides for how much time period green light should be on, then after that it should be made off and so on. Next is the plant. Plant is the actual display of traffic light. Like we can see the different colored light uh, like green, then orange, then red and so on. So this is the open loop transfer function because suppose there is no traffic on a, a particular road, even though if the a red light is there, red light is on there, it cannot be changed. It will be changed only after a predefined time period. So output is dependent only on input which is predefined earlier. So this is known as open loop system. Now as I mentioned controller is the part which decides the time period for which a particular uh, colored light should be on and off. And plant is the actual display which we see on the road. This R of T is known as reference input, C of T is known as controlled output, U of T is known as actuating signal. So controller is the part which gives the signal to the uh, signal for the display and we can see the display. So U of T is known as actuating signal. So this is the open loop transfer function whose good example is traffic light controller. The next part is closed loop system. This is the block diagram of closed loop system. In this case, there is a feedback connection. What's the meaning of feedback? This is the input just now I have explained you. Notation R of T indicates the reference input. This is the output which is called as controlled output. Part of output is connected back to the input side. This is known as a feedback connection. This is a feedback element, depending on the application we have to choose the particular element. Then this is controller and plant, which is similar to the earlier block diagram. A good example of closed loop control system is a room heater. If I am talking about a room heater, then this controller means there will be one wall. This feedback element means there will be one temperature sensor. Suppose you have set the temperature that the desired temperature is let us say 25 degrees centigrade so this is known as the reference temperature this temperature sensor which is acting as a feedback element senses the actual room temperature let us say actual room temperature is 20 degree then this signal which is the output of temperature sensor which is 20 degree as an example this is denoted by B of T. So B of T is the feedback signal. Now R of T is the input signal which we have set as a reference which is 25 degree. There is a difference between these two values. Difference is of 5 degrees. 
So I have written plus sign and minus sign. This is this this block, this particular thing is known as the adder. Actually, it is the subtractor because here I have written the minus sign. So it subtracts this 20 degrees from the 25 degrees and 5 degrees will be the output. This is known as the error signal. So mathematically, I can write error signal E of t is equals to R of t minus B of t. R of t is the reference input signal. B of t is the feedback signal. Accordingly, the position of wall is adjusted and this plant means it is actually a heating element. If I'm talking about a room heater. So accordingly, the heating element is uh, controlled or it is uh, uh, made on and off according to the requirement. So this process is a continuous, it takes continuously. C of T is the actual output. So this process is continuous up to the stage whenever you will get this error equals to zero. Once you will get error zero, the system is set and it will produce the output which is the 25 degree centigrade which is the desired output so this is the example of closed loop system next is the concept of transfer function i have shown one block diagram input is r of t reference input output is c of t controlled output and i have drawn one block and I, inside the block i have written system g of t system is basically any device a, any controlling part uh, which is used to produce the required output. So its function is denoted by G of T. Now, if you take Laplace transformation of this, do remember you don't need uh, complicated calculations as far as Laplace, which is required for control system, but you need to know some basic things that I will explain throughout the session. So if you want to transfer into Laplace, replace T by S and make each notation capital. For example, Laplace of input R of T, I will denote it by capital R of S. What I said, replace T by S and make the write the notations capital. Laplace of G of T can be written as capital G of S. Laplace of C of T is C of S and so on. So, what's the definition of transfer function? It is the ratio of output to the input in the Laplace domain and it is the transfer function. So I will write the definition like the G of S that is the transfer function is equals to in Laplace domain the output is denoted by C of S. So we have written ratio of output to the input. So it is C of S upon input is R of T in Laplace it is denoted by R of S. So it is R of S. So this is the definition of transfer function of a control system. Now let us solve few examples to get an idea of this transfer function. The question is determine transfer function of the following system. This is the given diagram in the question. Now you can well use this such examples using KVL but many students find KVL difficult as such KVL is lengthy for such numericals. So I will be telling you some the simplest technique uh, which needs the formula of voltage division. For your reference I have drawn this diagram V is the supply voltage there are two resistors which are connected in series one after other VR1 is voltage across resistance R1 across this R1. VR2 is voltage across resistance R2. Formula is if V is the supply voltage and if I want to calculate VR1, formula is VR1 is V supply voltage into that resistance across which you are calculating voltage divided by addition of resistance R1 plus R2, same way. If you want to calculate VR2, what's the formula? Supply voltage that is V into that resistance. That resistance means VR2 is across R2, so into R2 divided by addition of all addition of all means R1 plus R2. One more thing, to solve such numericals, you need few Laplace uh, formulae, only three Laplace formulae, which are pretty simple. We have three basic elements, RLC, register, inductor and capacitor. In case of Laplace, register remains as it is, there is no change. If it is inductor, in Laplace it is represented by S into L. S is the Laplace operator. It's the notation. Like in normal cases, we use notation T. Likewise, in Laplace, notation is S. 
C that is capacitance is replaced by 1 by SC. So first step is before starting solving the numerical, let us transfer, let us draw the new diagram in the Laplace domain. So in place of V and of T, I will write V in of S. As I mentioned, we have to convert it into Laplace. Same way V0 of T will be replaced by V0 of S. This is the resistance 10 ohm, it remains as it is. Just now I explained resistance remains as it is. Inductor is replaced by S into L. L is the value of inductance. It's one Henry's. So using this formula, I will write one Henry's will be replaced by S into one. That is simply S. So for this one Henry's, I will write S. Then capacitance is replaced by I am using this formula 1 by SC. C is the value of capacitance. Value of capacitance is 1 farad. So this capacitance that is 1 farad is replaced by 1 upon S into 1. That is simply 1 by S. So in place of capacitance, I will write 1 by S. This is the way how to transfer the equation into the uh, diagram into the Laplace domain. So I will transfer the diagram into the Laplace domain. Now make the thing simple. We have to make use of the uh, voltage division formula. Suppose I need to calculate V0 of S. Look at the diagram. V0 of S is the voltage drop across this capacitor that is across 1 by S between these two points. What is the supply voltage? Supply voltage is V in of S. Make use of this rule. See, I have uh, explained you the rule only for two resistors. It is applicable for n number of elements. So, how to implement this uh, rule? V0 of S is the voltage drop across 1 by S. So, formula is it is equals to V0 of S that is supply voltage into that resistance. In this case, it is not a resistance, but we will consider it as some element which is produ producing certain opposition. So that value is 1 by S. What, what is the rule? Supply voltage into that value or that resistance. In this case, this resistance or this value is 1 by S. V in into 1 by S upon addition of all. So it is 10 plus S plus 1 by S. Now, I have explained you the transfer function. Do remember the basic formula is V0 of S upon V in of S ratio of output to the input. So simply transform this V in of S at the LHS side. So I will write V0 of S upon V in of S is equals to 1 by S divided by 10 plus S plus 1 by S. Now to simplify the equation, I will keep numerator term as it is. For denominator, I will take LCM. So this 10 will be multiplied with S. It becomes 10 into S. This S is multiplied with S. It becomes S square plus 1. This 1 remains as it is. Entire thing is divided by S. Now very simple. This S and S gets cancelled. So final answer is transfer function which is V0 of S upon V in of S is equals to 1 upon S square plus 10S plus 1. It is same as 10S plus S square plus 1. For the simplicity, I have written it in proper order. If it is asked to uh, plot the poles and zeros, very simple. You already learned it in other subjects. I will tell you, just calculate the roots of denominator. So that represents the poles. But presently, as far as control system is concerned, the calculation of transfer function is expected. So let us solve one complicated numerical so that this concept will be more clear to you. The question is, this diagram is given and it is asked to calculate the transfer function of this system. Now there are many elements. First task is to convert this diagram into Laplace domain. Like the previous case, this is V in of T. I will write it as V in of S. This term V0 of S. Resistance remains as it is. So R1, R2, R3 will remain as it is. For C, just now we learned it is replaced by 1 by SC. Keep in mind, values are not given. So it is somewhat complicated compared to the earlier sum. So we will get the answer in terms of notation. So this capacitance will be replaced by 1 by SC. Now how to solve this? To simplify the calculations, we have to make use of voltage division formula itself. But there are many elements, so let us simplify it first and then use uh, the voltage division formula. I will first calculate the total resistance of the circuit. How to do it? 
let us denote total resistance by RT. So RT is the total resistance. Start from this end. Keep in mind, this is open circuit where V0 of S is marked. We have to measure voltage over here. This is open circuit. That means these two, R2 and R3 are in series. So if I want to calculate total resistance R of T, I have to start, this is the source. I have to start from remaining end. That is from this end. So as I mentioned, this is open circuit because in the thing is connected. We have to just connect multimeter to uh, uh, measure the things. So R2 and R3 are connected one after other because after this there is an open circuit. So they are in series. So I will write it like this R2 plus R3 because they are in series. I will put a bracket for this. Now this series combination, do remember the basic things. Such diagrams are known as ladder diagrams. If first combination is series, second will be in parallel, third will be in series, always it is alternative. So only important part is identify first combination. Since it is in series, next combination, next element 1 by SC will be in parallel. So I will write it like this. This is the notation for parallel, in parallel with 1 by SC. You will get one value. Now remaining combination, remaining element will be again series. So first series, parallel, series and so on. So since it is series, I will write plus R1. Very simple. Now I have to simplify this equation. So to simplify it, I will write it like this. R2 plus R3 into 1 by SC. We know the rule how to perform parallel combination. Multiplication of the things in the numerator term divided by addition of the things in the denominator. So it is R2 plus R3 plus 1 by SC. This term, this I have written it for a, a square bracket. Let us put the square bracket for this. This plus R1 remains as it is. Now, again simplify it. Keep the numerator as it is. So, R2 plus R3 into 1 by SC divided by. For the denominator, let us take the LCM. So, to LCM will be SC. So this R2 will be multiplied with SC, it becomes R2 into SC plus R3 will be again multiplied with SC, so it is R3 into SC. This one remains as it is plus 1 divided by SC. This plus R1 will remain as it is. Now this term SC and SC gets cancelled, so remaining value will be RT is equals to R2 plus R3 upon R2 SC plus R3 SC plus 1 plus R1. Again to simplify the calculation, let us take the LCM. So LCM will be the same term itself. So I will write it over here. RT is equals to R2 plus R3 plus now each term will be multiplied with R1 so it is R1 into R2 SC I have multiplied this term with R1 plus R1 into R3 into SC this R3 SC into R1 I have written it like this plus R1 1 into R1 is R1 divided by R2 SC plus R3 SC plus 1 this is the value of total resistance of the circuit. Now, next step is I will calculate the total current. Total current supplied by the source is like this. It is denoted by IT. Same current will come over here up to this point. So, I have to calculate total current. Simple rule. Basic formula is current is equal to voltage upon resistance. In this case, I will write total current is voltage is P in of S divided by RT. RT is the total resistance. Just now we have calculated this value. So let us put the value of RT in this case. So total current can be written as IT is equals to V in of S. Don't uh, think it is complicated. It is not at all complicated. Only the thing is that somewhat new, uh, calculations are lengthy. So V in upon RT. This is RT. So if you divide it by RT, numerator and denominator will be interchanged because it is in the denominator. So it will be R2 plus R3 plus R1 R2 SC plus 
R1 R3 SC plus R1 so I will remove this part so plus R1 then this is divided by RT into this will be into R2 SC plus R3 SC plus 1 this is the equation of I of T now after this we have to do the actual calculation of transfer function I have drawn the original diagram for the reference let us make use of the current division formula to make the calculation simple I will explain how to make use of this formula so this was the original diagram we have calculated the total current this is the total current up to this point the current is IT total current after this some current passes through this branch remaining current is passing through the capacitor let us say this current I will denote it by I0 now if I want to calculate I0 I will be using current division formula how do you use it I0 is equal to I need to calculate I0 I0 is the current passing through R3 so it is equal to total current total current is IT into remaining resistance listen carefully this is the point after which the current division takes place so whenever you are considering the values or elements I mean resistance only consider the values which are present after this point after current division point whatever values they are present before this do not consider it this is the important rule while applying current division formula so after this current division takes place what's the formula total current it into remaining resistance i need to calculate i0 i0 is flowing through r2 and r3 because just now we discussed r2 and r3 are in series so the i0 is flowing through r2 and r3 so remaining value is 1 by sc divided by addition of all values addition of all means do not consider r1 consider the values after the current division point so it is 1 by sc plus r2 plus r3 to make the calculation simple i will take lcm at this end so it becomes it into 1 by sc divided by 1 plus everything will be multiplied with sc r2 into sc plus r3 into sc divided by sc so this part s into c and s into c gets cancelled so simple equation is i0 is equals to it upon 1 plus r2 sc plus r3 sc now we have already calculated the value of it we have got the value of i0 so let us put the value of it in this case therefore i0 will be put this entire value that is v in of s upon r2 plus r3 plus r1 r2 s plus r1 r3 sc this is one more thing this is r1 r2 sc plus r1 r3 sc i am putting writing the values as it is plus r1 into this value i will put it in the bracket r2 sc plus r3 sc plus 1 this is the value of i0 now i0 is the current passing through r3 if i want to calculate v0 of s then we know the basic formula voltage is current into resistance so it is i0 into resistance is r3 because at the output we have resistance r3 so simply put the values so it becomes i will put the value of i0 as it is in this equation uh, one more thing this is the value of only i will remove this part to avoid the complications this is the value of only it this term i mean i mean this term will remain as it is because equation of i0 is it i have simply put the value of it divided by this term so it is divided by this so i will write it like this 1 upon 1 plus r2 sc plus r3 sc so this term and this term gets cancelled 
Now V0 of S is I0 into I3. I0 is this remaining term. So here itself I will make the substitution. I will cancel out this term. So V0 is I0 into R3. So I will write it over here. V0 of S is equal to this thing into R3. Now what is asked in the question? In the question it is asked to calculate the transfer function. So last step is we need value of V0 of S upon V in of S. So simply transfer this V of S at the LHS. So it becomes R3 divided by R2 plus R3 plus R1 R2 SC plus R1 R3 SC plus R1. That's it. I know these are complicated, I mean lengthy calculations, but the procedure remains same for any type of numerical. So either you will have to use voltage division formula or solve it like this. It will save your time instead of using KVL. So dear students, that's it for today's session. Thank you. Thanks for watching.